the grand scheme of things, um, not being able to travel for the last 12, 14 months, you know, really was the least of my worries or, or, or anyone else's, you know. Um, I think having to stay closer to home, fish closer to home, you know, not having the freedoms that, you know, we've all become used to, um, really was just a small price to pay for everything that's been, that's been happening. But that said, the fishing in Europe is something that's become really important to me over the last 10 years um, and something that I really cherish, you know, being able to get away and have those adventures um, is, is, is just something that I really, really enjoy. So, yeah, when the time came around finally again to load the van and get on the road, um, yeah, I was really excited. It feels weird. I spent so much time at home, I think. Last, last sort of year and a quarter, the thought of going away seems, um, yeah, seems bizarre. I feel a bit anxious, in honesty. So many bits of kit you need for a trip like this as well. Like, I'm pretty much sure I must have forgotten a few things. But yeah, can't wait. Just can't wait to see something, something different than some UK roads as well. It's like a lifetime ago, when the world was normal. <sighs> like an old friend. Amazed that I've actually made it for once without like with more than a minute and a half to spare. Early start's always a bit of a burn, isn't it? Best of intentions. It's always a dilemma, isn't it? Like fill yourself full of caffeine and you'll just about get through, but then crash horribly at the end of it. Or uh, drink plenty of water and you'll probably feel breezy, but don't feel like you're getting the uh, you don't feel like you're getting the the fun or the energy out of it somewhere. I need a bit of food really. Nice little fresh warm pan of shock, that'll sort me out. What side of the road do we drive on again? Eleven o'clock. Actually gonna make good time for once. This was actually the first time that I've done one of these bigger trips on my own. In the past, it's always been with someone else, and I think um, there's a lot of things that come with that. You know, you've got someone else, obviously, to share the fishing with, someone else to help you make decisions, someone else to be out in the boat, maybe with you at night, or if it's rough, you know, for safety aspects and things like that. So, yeah, I must admit, I was a little bit nervous about this trip, um, partly because I was on my own, but also partly because I hadn't been too much further, you know, than my local town um, for the last 16 months. Uh, so. You know, being back out on the road in a different country with everything that was going on, you know, yeah, I was, I was definitely a little bit nervous about being away. Bit of a pit stop. I'm starting to feel a little bit hollow inside with, um, yeah, just the coffee since, uh, since 4 a.m. or whatever it's been. So, um, pan of shark, a few other little tasty treats, and uh, yeah, no veggie options on the. Um, uh, on the baguette front, which was a bit of a disappointment, but um, <laughs> so we got a uh, goat's cheese and courgette tart. Which I'm not going to lie, looks pretty good. Yeah, they um, you just don't get this in the UK, do you? Look at that. Most of you probably thinking that's not going to beat a McDonald's, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take that all day long. Huh. I think for me, one of the most exciting aspects of these sort of trips um, is the anticipation of going somewhere new. You know, I think with fishing, it's beautiful going back to places that you know, but I think the buzz that you get from turning up at somewhere that you've never seen before, um, facing situations and challenges that you haven't come across before, seeing new places, like, yeah, it's hard to beat that, I think, for me. So um, I was really looking forward to, um, to seeing some new scenery two lakes that I'd never been to before, I had no idea what to expect and the one thing that I did know was that there were two vastly different venues as well which was also really exciting. The next couple of days we're going to provide the perfect opportunity uh, to catch up with an old friend. I've been wanting to fish with Stefan for years, we're both busy guys and it had just never quite happened. First things first was to fuel up on a coffee and just have a good chat with Stefan about the lake. Um, it's somewhere that he's fished for years, somewhere really close to his house and somewhere that he was convinced really was the perfect place, uh, you know, just to have a nice couple of casual social days fishing with a really good chance of catching a few. So we had a little look on Google Earth, had a look at some likely areas 
and then once we've got the Carte de Pêche sorted, which for some reason always seems to be a bit of a drama to do from the UK, um, obviously with Stefan's help uh, with the French translation, we got that sorted, got that printed out and headed off down the lake. The lake really is a, it's a really typical French barrage, um, about 350 acres I think, it's got some big shallow arms um, and classically of these big reservoirs it's got a deeper barrage end. Um, Given the weather forecast, one of the areas that I was really interested in um, was the end that was going to be on the end of those big winds that were forecast, um, and that just happened to be the barrage end. So that was the first place that we went to have a look at. It looks amazing. It looks mega. Yeah, it's quite a. Haven't fit the last couple of times that I came over. I didn't really fish any any of the big reservoirs. They've just got a really unique feel. I think all of their own. Like you don't really get lakes like this back in the UK either. I think. They always feel a bit bleak and a bit dirty, like the level's always down, it's always it's clay and mud everywhere, big industrial um, kind of barrage ends. As they've just got a really distinct, unique feel to them. That's one of the amazing things about doing this sort of fishing is that um, you get to fish so many different different lakes with, with different flavours and yeah, these kind of places definitely have got something all their own for sure. It's beautiful, mate. It's really lovely. Like the, the, the trees, it's like the backdrop's beautiful. And it's just flat as well. It's just flat, yeah. It's been a really strange year, weather-wise. Um, we had a really, really late, cold spring. Um, the majority of April, bar I think really one or two days, um, had been really cold. We'd had a big, long string um, of easterlies and a load of frost as well. And that weather had been the same out in France. Um, so all the lakes that would usually be productive in April and May just weren't really looking like a prospect this year. So as it turned out, we actually had to uh, make some last minute changes of plans really to counteract how unseasonable the weather had been. Started putting a few baits out with the sticks, fine, they're going out lovely. It's really nice into the wind, that's sort of like 50, 60, 70 yard kind of zone, but um, yeah, it's gonna take, I don't know, the best part of an hour to put five key or so out. So, um, figured it'd only take me five minutes to pump the boat up. Just going to scatter them out there with the boat. Quick little donk around as well while I'm out there, just um, check that the bottom's, the bottom's sweet. Um, and yeah, should hopefully be done with in about half an hour or so, seems like a much better idea. Looks amazing here with the wind pushing in for the morning. So, and seen a couple already. Definitely looks like the place to start. So yeah, get the boat out and um, get some bait in. I think we'd only been there for five or 10 minutes um, and we'd already seen two, three, four shows, I think, something like that. So the weather looked perfect. It was moody, it was rainy. Forecast for the next days was for that to really intensify as well. So I wanted a nice big spread of bait out there. I know those reservoir carp love their bait. Typically of those kind of places, you know, the bottom is really clean and clear and uniform. So I wasn't too worried about spots, just wanted to put a big spread out. Well, that was nice and easy. Nice little window in the rain as well. Cool, mate. Well, 5 a.m.? Yeah. yeah? Cool. Perfect. I'll see you here, mate. As is quite typical of lots of the uh, big French reservoirs, it's strictly days only, so we knew we couldn't spend the nights there, so we'd arranged to stay in a little campsite um, just on one of the points opposite. Um, so once we've got the bait out, headed off around there, had a quick sort out of the van and all the kit, made some sense of all that, cooked up a nice bit of hard earned fresh food, and um, yeah, just sat back and took it all in. Um, having got some bait out and having seen some carp as well, and with the prospect of the weather that was coming in, I was really excited about the next couple of days.
I mean, from having a little donk around the previous evening that the lake bed was really nice and firm and clear, probably just firm, hard sand with the odd little bit of gravel. So in terms of tactics and rigs, I just wanted to keep things as simple as I possibly could. So um, leg clip, big leads, decent link, nice balanced snowman and a big hook. Didn't need to make it any more complicated than that. Minor drama with a lost phone this morning. Hence we're about half an hour, 45 minutes behind schedule. But um, yeah, it's all good. Um, no mad rush, we found the phone. Uh, so yeah, steam this last rig and then um, get them out. Sticks are in, seen a couple in the area. Um, that put that bait in yesterday evening, so it's looking good. It is black on the horizon. It's gonna lag down, I reckon, in about 20 minutes time. So yeah, just get this last one shrunk down, get them out and see what happens. Definitely need a coffee and a bit of breakfast as well. But yeah, it's looking good. Hey, that was a better one. Ha! That was a nice one. It's like up to the uh, pelvics, wasn't it? Mega. Well, they're definitely here. Went in sweet. First cast is always nice. I don't really know what that is, it's only about 50 yards maybe. It's a bit hard to judge the distance, but yeah, it's not far. To be fair, them couple have just seen jump have um, been a little bit closer than that anyway. So fairly decent depth of water actually out there. It's a little bit deeper than I thought. Um, so I might drop, might drop them sort of progressively slightly, slightly shorter actually, just so I've got a bit of uh, options with the range as well. <laughs> Another one just walloped out, about 20 yards behind the marker. Definitely a few here. It's understatement of the year. <laughs> Tell it's deep, to how much of a bow you get to bring it back to time. Yeah, I must admit, I was a little bit nervous about this trip. I hadn't been too much further than my local town for the last 16 months. I think for me, one of the most exciting aspects of these sort of trips is the anticipation of going somewhere new. Which one is it, Rich? Definitely a lot of carp out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you come to big French reservoirs for, isn't it? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Night. Rich. Get in that net. <laughs> Go on. Uh, that'll be a bite in the background. See you later, mate. Nice one. Shit, he's going. That's what you come here for, isn't it? 